This piece of paper is worthless. It's a piece of paper. Cash is always a bad investment. Cash is trash. Dahlia was referring to the dramatic increase in money supply due to all the money printing. The more liquidity there is in the market, the less value each dollar holds. But the excess of cash also inflates all prices, like property, stocks, and even consumer goods. In fact, in 2021, the cost of consumer goods went up by 5.4%. Savings started to disappear. The unemployed took the worst hit. And an economic bubble was created, making things unstable. While the government is reassuring the people that prices are likely to fall back in the middle of 2022, the truth is your cash is losing value with every passing day. It may be hard to believe, but there is such a thing as having too much money saved away. Whatever interest you get on your savings account isn't nearly enough to cover inflation. So your cash still loses value while sitting in your bank account or in a bag buried in your backyard. The greatest tax in the world is inflation. It's a hidden tax. It goes down in value, right? They just print more. So its ability to buy things goes down in value because the price of things goes up. Money depreciates faster than we can comprehend. And those who have realized this have started investing. So why do the rich get richer? What's the secret? The world's 10 richest men have just gotten richer, doubling their collective fortunes since March 2020. Meanwhile, the poor get poorer. In 1970, American banks gave an interest rate from 7 to 11 percent. Today, banks provide no more than 0.06 percent. Meanwhile, the cost of living has skyrocketed and fewer and fewer families receive a decent middle-class income. Every time we shop at Walmart, we ship dollars and jobs over to China and Pakistan and all the other countries. So what happens? We say the government should take care of us, but the truth is they won't. We can either sit and protest or we can change. Money continues and will continue to depreciate in value. People invest their money to build wealth, which means they slowly invest their savings over time, and proceeds from their investments are reinvested into other ventures. Investments generate income for you. Your assets can also gain value over time, allowing you to sell your stocks at a profit. The idea is to get money to work for you, not have you work for money. Let's say you have your eye on a Tesla, a brand new Tesla Performance Model Y, which retails at $62,190. And let's say you have the money to buy it at full price right now. You might just go ahead and order the car for yourself without a second thought. And why not? You have a dream and the money to fulfill the dream. But a person with an investment mindset would think differently. If they have $62,190, they will buy an asset for that price that will appreciate over time. So very simple, the definition of asset and liability is not the house of this, it's cash flow. Where is the cash flowing? So as a young person, <coughs> and to all millennials, or if you're old, financial intelligence is the ability to control cash flow. A car is an asset, no, a car is a liability, you got insurance, gas, upkeep, and all this. Now if you buy a, a taxi car, it could be an asset. It's cash flow. A four bedroom home in Ohio costs a little over $60,000. And a three bedroom in Niagara County, New York costs only 56,000. A person with an investment mindset would buy a house, rent it, and allow that income to accumulate over time until they can afford the Tesla again. Investing in real estate is one way to grow your money. But another technique is becoming an increasingly popular way to hedge against inflation. Gold was long regarded as the go-to inflation hedge, but the world is different now. Cryptocurrencies seem to be the new inflation-resistant asset in town, and Bitcoin, which is the largest of them all, has all the makings of an excellent hedge. Why? Because Bitcoin is not tied to any one currency or economy. Bitcoin also isn't controlled by a company or stakeholders. If anything, it's an international asset that reflects global demand. When the U.S. is experiencing high inflation, investors have to take on more risk to offset the decline in existing asset values. So while a 3% yield was good enough to allow you to retire, now even 6% won't cut it. 
The S&P 500 is a stock market index that tracks the stocks of 500 of America's largest companies. The average long-term return of the S&P 500 is somewhere around 7 to 8% per year, which is barely above the inflation rate. Now, it has had higher returns in the last 10 years. The downside? Valuation is now much higher than in previous years, so getting in is not easy. This is why investors are looking at options outside the U.S. for a return of over 6%. Enter Bitcoin. Bitcoin sidesteps many of the political and economic risks associated with the U.S. stock market, and it's a practical way to diversify your investment portfolio. It is also a better bet as an inflation hedge because of its limited supply. There will be no more than 21 million coins, and over 19 million have already been mined. A fixed supply means new coins can never enter circulation, meaning there can never be inflation. And like gold, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are interchangeable and secure. But unlike gold, Bitcoin is also portable, transferable, and arguably more decentralized. Even gold supply is controlled by sovereign nations like the US and China. But theoretically speaking, anyone in the world can store and protect their Bitcoin easier than they can with gold. But the words investing and cryptocurrency invite fear of the unknown for those who have never done this before. How does one start? What does it entail? More importantly, how long will it take? Albert Einstein said, Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand it, earn it. Those who don't, pay. Approximately $81.5 billion of Warren Buffett's $116 billion came to him after his 65th birthday. Yes, he makes good choices with investments, but his secret is time. If you want to work better as an investor, the best thing you can do is increase your time horizon which means sticking with an asset long-term for good returns in the future. It's less about high returns and more about earning good returns over the longest period of time. This is where compounding comes in. Compounding means you get interest on your initial investment and the interest that keeps getting added to it. Basically, it means taking your earnings and reinvesting them back into the asset to generate higher returns. If, for example, you invested a dollar in Amazon and got $2 in return, you would reinvest those $2 back in Amazon to get $4. You would reinvest the $4 again to make 8 Instead of spending your returns, you put them back into the asset to make you more money. Buffett started investing at the age of 11, and since then he has had an average annual return of 22%, which is twice the average stock market return. 22% is nothing compared to a 66% annual return that Jim Simons, a mathematician who runs Renaissance Technologies, has enjoyed. But despite higher returns, he only has a quarter of Buffett's wealth. Why? Because he hasn't consistently compounded his wealth for as long as Buffett has. Buffett has more money than any investor in the world because he has spent more time in the market than anybody else. There is an advantage to getting in early and sticking around for a long time. If you are thinking of investing, you should start now. Whether you go in with $100 or $100,000, invest it and stay invested. Give it enough time. It's a simple premise, but so many new and seasoned investors fail to follow this advice because they get greedy. Compounding only works if you give an asset years and years to grow. It makes you financially unbreakable. And more importantly, it provides you with the safety and security you need to be independent. The highest form of wealth is the ability to wake up every morning and say, I can do whatever I want today. Financial freedom gives you back control over your own life. So even if money can't buy you happiness, it can certainly buy you the freedom to go ahead and do what makes you happy. If you want to be inspired to create change in your emotional, mental, physical, and financial health, go ahead and subscribe to our channel for inspirational and motivational content. Hit the bell icon to be notified every time we upload and share this video with somebody who has been hesitant to take the first step into investing.
Thanks for watching.